I went to Great Salt Lake after recovering from being hit by a car in a crosswalk on man-made asphalt, but it took me longer to correlate the lake's tar seeps of natural asphalt by comparison. Tar seeps are pools of natural asphalt that creep up from tectonic fractures and spread across the earth like sticky flypaper. They are nicknamed death traps, an unsuspecting animal or bird like a pelican that crosses a melting seep of asphalt can get fatally stuck. In the remote north arm of Great Salt Lake at Roselle Point, a series of tar seeps converge near the iconic earthwork of Spiral Jetty created by Robert Smithson in 1970. Smithson selected Roselle Point because of its oil seeps near a straight jetty from abandoned attempts at drilling. Downshore, his artwork unfurls a massive spiral of salt-encrusted, extracted black basalt, 15 feet wide and 1,500 feet long, three times counterclockwise, into the reputedly dead sea. Over recent years, between the two jetties, I witnessed a team of environmental scientists, artistic curators, land managers, and students working collaboratively to steward a challenging place. As I visited the lake again and again, listening to different perspectives, life and death, degeneration and regeneration, injury and healing slowly started to congeal. My accident colored the backdrop against which I came to see the lake, not as dead, but as wildly alive, a watershed for shifting perceptions of any overlooked place. To visit the mudflats is to travel through time in place. Ancient shorelines etch the hills as echoes of the prehistoric Lake Bonneville, whose flooding left remnant lakes through the Great Basin. Fast forward, past abandoned attempts at oil drilling, after Spiral Jetty's creation, the artwork disappeared under rising lake levels for three decades. After the waters receded, the artwork reemerged, raising questions about its care. Stewardship grew not only around the artwork, but the lake and the land that it inhabited. Abandoned equipment was removed from the site, and threats of revived drilling were halted. Yet, as Spiral Jetty gained more attention, the tar seeps were essentially overlooked. More tar seeps have emerged as the lake has dropped to record lows from drought, with fossilizing signs of the lake's abundant life. Millions of birds annually migrate to the nearby Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge, including pelicans over Roselle Point. Great Salt Lake does not exist in isolation at the convergence of two of the four major migratory bird flyways of North America. The lake also converges with agricultural runoff, toxic dumps, pollution, and resource extractions. A migrating bird that ingests a toxin around Great Salt Lake can carry it elsewhere. Those who care about the lake's stinky, salty, bacteria-filled, seemingly dead waters liken it to a heartbeat that pulses life through water cycles of the American West and beyond. Trying to find alternative narratives for climate change beyond apocalypse, prophecy, elegy, or tug-of-warring tropes between progress and loss can cause us to chase the tales of our tales. 
shapes of stories circle the edges of our fears, so our tellings often fall into predictable patterns and fossilize, separating us from the animals that we are. Visual literacy in the digital age makes us less attuned to multisensory embodied knowledges, which otherwise help us to interact with the world beyond words. All of us are gloriously yet vulnerably entangled, but so many stories arise from fear of death rather than awe of life, disengaging the individual from the communal and the human from the non-human. The climate crisis isn't a linear narrative. It's more like tar seeps, where a step can get us stuck. On the ground at Roselle Point, natural asphalt oozes from underground and creeps across the face of the earth. When temperatures rise, the seeps awake. The otherworldly landscape swallows a human body into the reality of its smallness, the gravity of its orbit. Relationships heighten, actions recalibrate, each movement demands presence, senses awaken beyond sight with the stink of melting asphalt, the penetrating heat of the high desert. The air can pulse with the flight of pelicans, a huffing wingbeat, wingbeat, wingbeat that hushes you in your tracks. Life reduces elementally as human presence is thrown into relief as perceptions form and deform around how we value and devalue any place. To be surrounded by natural death traps in a reputedly dead sea blurs lives and landscapes on a biodiverse planet. Separations melt, I to we. Under our skins thrive microbial ecosystems. Sloshing in our ears, biorhythms reverberate as microcysms, akin to heartbeats of living bodies of water. Others' lives echo in our own, resonating in ways that, if listened to, might hopefully decenter ourselves from the center of any story. As you listen, wherever you are, what do you hear? <laughs> 